back to the AutoHotKey tutorials for advanced users. In this video I'm just going to continue with the topic that I started last time which was the Windows messages and on the last video we saw the function, the onMessage function which uh, allowed us to catch Windows messages and we could react to it by running a function and actually this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to send those messages and the way um, the reason why I'm going to do that is because uh, first I find it very amusing um, to be able to communicate with other programs besides your script and this is very very useful in a lot of certain situations. I'm going to explain you more or less how it goes um, but also it is because the this solves a specific problem. Sometimes people want two or more scripts to talk to each other and what they do is that they use a workaround like f using a file on the desktop or in a temporal folder t if that file exists your script is gonna do this and that and that is kind of like a uh, workaround that is uh, not that good. I would say sending a message, a direct message to a script is a cleaner um, solution to that problem. So I'm gonna show you uh, two commands which are send message and post message. They actually work almost exactly the same. I have to say the parameters are exactly the same. So I'm gonna grab one of them, show you the parameters. It is exactly the same for the other one. The only difference between those two commands is that the send message sends the message, obviously as this name <laughs> Uh, suggests uh, and actually waits for an answer from the window or control that you sent the message to because some windows or controls can send information back they can even give you notification information about the program itself I'm gonna give you an example of that later on but the post message just simply sends the message and that was it it doesn't wait for anything else that was it so with that in mind again I'm gonna just simply gonna grab the send message command I'm gonna show you the parameters for it it, it they are the same for the other command but just keep in mind that one of them waits for an answer and the other one doesn't so the send message waits for the answer um, and if you're not sure about what I'm talking about right now uh, you can take a look at the on message function video so you can get a few ideas of what I'm gonna try to explain right now just a heads up this video might be a little bit longer because I'm gonna give you like three examples um, that I hope that they're practical enough for you to get some ideas of what you can do with this thing. So, messages, as I mentioned on the other video, um, they are divided in three parts, I would say. The message itself, which uh, if you look through MSDN, you can get the names of them and the values of them. Like, for example, I don't know if you remember that we saw something like L button down or something like that. That is the name of the message. Now those names represent a hexadecimal number which is what I'm gonna be using at the moment. I'm not gonna put the name of the message in there. I'm just gonna put the hexadecimal number. Um, so that is the first part. The value of the message. So if you want to get the, ma the value of a message I suggest you to do two things. Either go to MSDN which is the best solution. I like going there just to get the correct information or if you are doing something simple like uh, again L button down is a simple command uh, I don't know uh, hotkey or so on those you can find them in the auto hotkey manual under Windows messages as you can see here and there's a list of them you can see the the Windows message name right and then the value for it so I can I'm gonna be using the hexadecimal numbers for each of them instead of putting the names Okay, so in our case, what I'm going to be doing is, um, the first example is, I'm going to grab Notepad in here, and my script right now is going to try to communicate with not Notepad. The message that I'm going to be sending is the 0xc, which, by the way, again, as I mentioned, is a hexadecimal number, and is the message set text. And as you can see, the name of the variable already tells you what it does. Actually it allows you to change the text of a control or a window. Now the next two parameters are the next two parts of a message. So each message has a value as I mentioned. The second thing that they have is a W param and that is actually as a, a kind of like an optional parameter that you can uh, send along with that message to give a kind of like a more specific information about what you want to do. So on the MSDN page whenever you see a message 
uh, you see the value and everything. Below they tell you what the W per M and L per M should be to get specific things. That's why I actually really suggest you to go to the MSDM page instead of the um, auto hot key manual so that you can get more information out of it. So the first parameter is the zero, uh, the W per M. I'm going to set it to zero. I do not want to send anything in there. And the third part of a message is its second parameter, which is the L per M. Again, all of this was covered on the other video, so if you want to get more information, you can take a look at that. And in this case, what I'm going to put in here is the text that I want to send to that window or control. In our case, I'm going to say HK Toots uh, title demo or something like that. I don't know. I lack creativity, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so basically, um, the first parameter is the message that you want to send. The, sec the, the next two parameters are the W and L parameters, respectively. And now, the next parameter is, in case that you want to send the uh, this message to a control, you would put the name of the control, or the variable associated with it, um, in here, as, uh, as an option here. But at the moment, I do not want to send the message to a control, so I'm going to leave that blank. Um, the next parameter is a title for a window, which is what I want. So I'm going to put in here, entitled Notepad, just... Uh, <laughs> A quick note in here, those titles are case sensitive, unless you disable that option. Um, but uh, be careful, when you type the titles, it should be on the correct case. And in this parameter, you can actually use uh, the AHK class, uh, sorry, the class of the, the window class, or something like the process ID of this of the program or script that you that you want to message. Those are kind of like a little bit more advanced situations. I'm going to show you an example of when you will want to use the AHK class. So until now, I do not need any of those. I'm just going to leave the title in there. And if I run this script, you will notice that the name of the title just changed. So again, <laughs> now my script is able to communicate with the program outside itself. So those little things make your script <laughs> more powerful because that means that now um, any program that can understand that message um, can interact with your program and, and I mean any program for example let's say auto hotkey toolkit so this <laughs> is my script and it also knows how to handle the set text message so when I run this automatically this the title of my script changes to whatever I said it, it should be changed and this is amazing this is cool um, the main reason why we, you, you would like to play with this kind of stuff is for example auto hotkey is not a multi-threaded language that means that if you're running a loop in your script nothing else is gonna run until that loop is over and that is actually kind of annoying in some situations when you want to run two, three loops at the same time. So that doesn't go in outer hotkey. Some people, what they do is that they have three scripts, each of them with one loop, and then they have a workaround, like for example, creating a file on a temporary folder, and then checking if the file exists. If not, then the scripts stop, and so on. Uh, they do not have, they do not know how to make those three scripts communicate with each other. Well here's the answer you can send messages to each other especially if they understand how to do those messages so the the next the next example that i want to bring is actually how to install